If you ask people their favorite character from modern Persona, you'll probably get a lot of Akechis and Makotos, some Kanjis and Naotos, maybe even Ryuji and Yosuke. But there are a few characters that you don't see that often up at the top of the popularity polls. These two being Teddy and Morgan. And you might be saying, well, hold up a minute, you haven't mentioned Aegis or Koromaru. And I'll address that shortly. But after my many, many hours being sunk into Persona 4 and 5, I've come to the thought that I kind of don't really like the way they're handling mascot characters, and I'm worried about that for the foreseeable future of the franchise. Hey! What the hell? So to cut to the chase, Persona 3 is pretty much absolved of this problem. I know Atlas kind of flip-flops on who the mascot is, but for all intents and purposes, if we consider both Aegis and Koromaru as the mascots for Persona 3, they're still pretty much in the clear of this issue. Aegis, in my opinion, has a pretty amazing character arc, and Koromaru is a dog. Like, he doesn't speak words. He, he just barks. And sure, they translate it every now and then, but that still he's not really in the same pool as these other two. So I'm not including them in here because, plain and simple, they just don't share that problem. Gee, this is your doing! Open it! Boiling it down to the plain and simple, I'd say it's that Teddy and Morgana, as mascot characters, kind of pale in comparison to the other characters that they're surrounded with for the entire story. I don't mean to say that they're bad characters, but I have a lot of issues, maybe a lot more issues, with them than I do with other characters in the main cast. Even a lot of social links are more likable and more interesting than these two characters are, and it's kind of frustrating to see. Let's start with Teddy, and uh, Persona 4 spoilers for those of you who haven't picked up on the fact that I'm going to talk about spoilers in this. Teddy's goal, his driving motivation, is to find out who or what he is. He struggles with the truth of his identity, which is why his shadow lashes out against him. I've been deliberating over it for a long time now. Hey, that wasn't a bad joke. <laughs> Through this, Teddy is able to manifest a persona and an ego, if you will. Once he does that, he is also able to do enough sit-ups to create a human body. Please don't try this at home. And he begins to become his own character. I said this before, but I can sense something special about you, Sensei. Teddy's arc is actually pretty fulfilling. He essentially discovers that it doesn't matter what he is, because what really matters is who he becomes. Unfortunately, while this arc in itself is pretty neat and could be pretty enjoyable, he's bogged down by the fantastic idea to make him quirky and silly by having him flirt and fool around with the girls almost all the time. My, it's getting crowded here. Why don't you and I go somewhere else? Come on, pretty please? Teddy becomes, in his own words, unbearable. He gets buried underneath this quirk that makes him the silly mascot character. It's one of those things some stories do because they really like to do it with their mascot characters, where they do stupid things because they're not from this world or whatever, and they're cute, so it's excusable. And I'd be fine with it if they turned it into a maturing point in Teddy's character where he learns what to do and what not to do, but they definitely don't do that. And sure, some of it could be lost in translation, I completely understand that, but it still leaves me with a pretty sour feeling of his character overall. Ah, you're giving me the creeps! That's it, you're stuck here for the rest of your life! Now on to Morgan. With the kitty, it feels like they learned a decent amount from Teddy. He starts off cute, but competent. He's got a high and mighty attitude, but he still has his own goals and ambitions. However, he's much more plot devicey than Teddy. My issue with Morgana is that his amnesia is kind of a central point for his character, but it also is a plot device. He remembers what he needs when he needs to, with no explanation as to why he happens to remember these key details. Besides, the story needs him to explain this so the player understands it. Since his true identity is so closely related to Igor and the Velvet Room, we can't actually let him gain footing on what he is in his amnesia until really the end of base Persona 5. Morgana's arc is actually pretty reasonable. He starts off as the best, most experienced member of the Phantom Thieves, 
and for the first few months, he's by far the most knowledgeable member. Makoto makes a little headway into his space, but she doesn't really invade it, per se. Futaba is actually the one, unintentionally of course, this is not her fault, who makes him feel incompetent. She overthrows him as the most resourceful member of the Thieves in terms of metaverse knowledge. It makes him feel kinda small. And again, this is no one's fault by the way. And this would be great if the execution allowed for it, but Morgana kind of follows the trope of letting all of the insecurities bubble up inside him, and he ultimately has a 0 to 100 lash out aimed at the thieves, when really the only issue is kind of himself. And I do think this kind of thing is more realistic than people give credit for, but the way it's executed in Persona 5 just doesn't work for me. It kind of feels like a moment that should have a little bit more build up to it. I felt that him blowing up at the entire team is really just him blowing up at Ryuji. He actually directly points out Ryuji in the argument, and really the only conflict is with him and Ryuji, so it doesn't feel like he's fully blowing up at the whole team. At the very least, I'm more admirable than some carnal blonde monkey. This is kind of turning into a different discussion, so let me refocus. Morgana is problematic because he's a plot device to explain the metaverse and introduce things when the player needs to know about them. What's my amnesia? A need to know basis. Who's anyone? No, of course not. I'm all by my bearsome. You could say I'm a very lonesome boy. I get it. So I didn't totally touch on this before, but Teddy also has amnesia. Really, the main difference is that Teddy's amnesia is pretty minor in his character. The only thing he's forgotten is what he really is. Otherwise, he lives in the TV world and has been living in the TV world for some extended, unmentioned amount of time, so it's pretty easy to understand why he'd know the ins and outs. He doesn't have amnesia about anything other than what he is. Morgana, on the other hand, we get zero reasoning for him to really know how things work in the metaverse. He's got the knowledge, but we don't know what he was doing before we meet him. Is he old or young? We aren't told. Teddy makes it very clear that he's been living in the TV world for a very long time. So at least he has that going. Just kick back and wait for my wonderful comeback. Peace out! If we aren't planning to remove mascots as a whole, then I just want them to become more like actual characters. I kind of want Atlas to do away with the amnesia stuff. Morgana and Teddy genuinely have actual interesting arcs. I don't blame anyone who actually likes them as characters, because I do think they have realistic personalities and realistic traits that become realistic character arcs. But it's buried underneath a mountain of quirky character traits amnesia plot bowl, and that just kind of makes them less interesting than the main cast to me. And it's kind of a shame too, because I do want to like these characters more, but it just it doesn't work out. <laughs> Anyways, I hope my thoughts have resonated with some of you, as I know there are a lot of people who find problems with Morgana, and there are definitely a lot of people who find problems with Teddy. And I want to know what you guys think, so why don't you let me know down in the comments below. As always, you can leave a like if you enjoyed the video, if you want to see more of this kind of video of me criticizing, critiquing some stuff in Persona. If you want to see more like this, maybe more Persona stuff, Atlas games, JRPGs, you can subscribe to the channel for more things like that. Thank you for watching, and I'll see you guys next time.